Travolting presents The Fraser's Edge. Hosted by Jeff Sweeney and Stuart Elmore. Covering Airheads. With special guest, Adam Blight. And we're recording. Rock and roll! Oh, man. Blow your fucking brains out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right, folks. This Get ready to rock and roll on this week's episode of Travolting with special guest Adam Blythe here coming to you live from KPPX, now kind of degenerated by the Lone Rangers. Wow, that was good, Jeff. Thank you. That was a really good like radio announcement host. Yeah, I've I've thought about you know getting out of the biz and getting into that biz. Uh, you should. You should. You I should. mean, podcasting is the logical bridge between the two. It really is, though. <laughs> this, this whole show is just my audition tape. It uh, it, it it should be. Uh, strangely enough, for a movie that has Adam Sandler, Steve Buscemi, Brendan Fraser, Chris Farley. And a plethora of other, like, you know... Well, let, me, let me just run Let me just run down the billing order. There's a bunch yes. of old guys. A bunch of old guys. That are young. Here's, the, here's, the, uh, here's the, the billing order of this movie. Brennan Fraser, Steve Buscemi, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, Ernie Hudson, Michael McKean, Judd Nelson, Michael Richards, Joe Mantegna, um, Amy Locone, Reggie E. Kathy, David Arquette, Harold Ramis, Rob Zombie as himself. And where do we have to watch this movie, guys? This movie, impossible to find. Yeah. <laughs> it's Not, nowhere to be found. <laughs> nowhere to be found on streaming. The, I, I actually believe the only places you can watch this movie are on a Comedy Central rerun at 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and if you uh, miss it, but you, but you can only catch it 30 minutes in. <laughs> like, yeah. If you try and watch it at 9 a.m., there's just a black screen. It's you have only to, available at the Blockbuster. Yeah, it's only Oregon. available at Blockbuster <laughs> <laughs> or, on, or on Comedy Central, and you have to stumble across it. And I, it's never at the beginning. It's such a weird phenomenon with this type mm, of movie. Value. Yeah. So, because, like, I mean, I'm looking at, like, reviews, and it looks like it was sort of, you know, it's lukewarm. It's not like someone's trying to hide it, cease it from existing. So, and we'll talk about box office, but, you know, probably wasn't a huge success considering what yeah, the budget so, might be. So, that, I mean, we'll talk about the success of this movie after the fact. Yeah. But this movie is, it comes out of, you know, the wave of cult hits. Um, this movie was not a success when it came out. And the reason I mentioned, like, the only way you can watch it is on Comedy Central because this movie found success and became, like, an artifact of history because it just kept playing on Comedy Central. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it made no money in the box office, total flop, uh, poor reviews. They pulled it two weeks after it came out. It was only in theaters for two weeks. It was doing so bad. They were just like, all right, who wants the rights to this thing? Which streaming service is going to buy this movie? It got to be Crackle. Uh, <laughs> crackle? It's got to be Crackle. <laughs> what? It's, it's, is there a streaming service called Crackle that I don't know there about? There is a streaming service called Crackle that you don't worry about. It was the streaming home of Joe Dirt 2. It's oh going to be Voodoo. 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 All right. New bingo card game. Uh, all of like the streaming service titles that you would never thought would exist. Roku. Roku. Remember Quibi? What happened to Quibi? It, it died <laughs> because it was, number one, a bad idea. Right. Number two, they launched it at the beginning of the pandemic. True. And the gimmick was things you can watch when you're on the road or <laughs> when you're in transit. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then people were just not in transit. Um, It collapsed very quickly. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, kind of like movie pass. Airheads. Airheads. The motion picture... 1994. Let's catch up with our boy, Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Brendan Fraser, real quick. Fraser, okay. So this First off, thank you for listening to our last episode. On With uh, Honors. With Honors. Yes, an episode we've definitely already recorded. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then before that... Uh, our episode on Son-in-Law, another son one we've definitely already recorded. Right. We're in, we are not recording these out of order to fit... The demands of our guests. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> demands. <laughs> what? A gun? <laughs> what? Uh, um, so, Brendan Fraser is. Yeah. So, we're still waiting on that massive hit from yeah. him, right? So, like, this is ostensibly his, like, big comedy follow up to Encino Man. Right. Because he does, um, you know, Encino Man's, like, kind of his big break. When was this filmed? This was made in 93. Okay. Um, He's doing Cena a Man. lot in a short amount of time. They but all look really young for 93. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is like, he would have been, let me do the math here. 
He was born 68, so he would have been 10, 20, he would have been like 25. In but this. Sandler, I mean, this almost looks like his Oh, debut. Sandler, Sandler literally looks like he's out of the womb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's, he's popped out. Ed Buscemi, <laughs> he's still trying to aged. feel this guy yeah, this, out. I don't, I don't know what age Steve Buscemi is. Well, it's kind of like when we talked about younger and younger, uh, Donald Sutherland. Yeah. Like, he just reached that, like, like that white hair, white he got beard, old and, and he stopped. Mm. And he, he just stopped. He, he just continued exactly the same. Yeah. But no, like, Fraser, you know, Encino Man was kind of his big comedy breakout. He tries to do school ties as, like, counter-programming to that. He does, you know, 20 bucks um, and Younger and Younger aren't really movies that had much of an impact for yeah. him. Son-in-Law was just a cameo. Like, if we were going to call this its own sub-era, we would call this, like, the working actor era. Yeah. Like, because he's not, like, a big famous A-list. He hasn't won any Oscars. Yeah. Not even Because if you discount, like, the movies that don't exist and the cameos, he essentially goes Encino Man... With honors, airheads. Yeah, three like three back to back comedies. With honors, didn't really do much for him. It's more like the bit of that is more the Joe Pesci, about Joe Pesci of it all, as we talked about. Yeah, um, as we talked about, as we talked about. Um, but he comes into this, um, and this is you know, the director of this movie, uh, Michael Lemon, Michael Lemon, Lemon. I, it's, I don't Michael. know if it's, I think it's lame, Lemon. Lemon. Speaking of actors I don't want to say Michael a- Lemon. Lemon. Speaking of actors who haven't <laughs> aged a bit after this movie, uh, Chris Farley hasn't aged a day, right? Oh my ah, goodness. That I'm is sorry. morbid. <laughs> is this the guy in Pulp Fiction? Uh, Chris Farley? Yeah. No, Chris Farley died like, when did, he died in like 2000 or something. My Who's Rex? Rex? Uh, Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. He <laughs> killed it in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> he is incredible. But he plays the same character in every Do I movie. have a movie for you? It's called 20 Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> 20 Bucks. So we covered it. Steve Buscemi. I feel like he was also in criminal activities for some reason. <laughs> he was not, but he should have been either. <laughs> he should have been. That's a movie where Steve Buscemi would have thrived. 97. So Chris Farley would have aged four years after this movie. 97 is when Chris Farley died. Chris Farley was the big cop. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Kind of looks like Tim Dillon. A little bit like Tim Dillon. A little bit like a Tim, a Tim Dillon. Dillon vibe. And uh, so, so this movie comes out. Yeah, this movie comes out, and uh, the director of it, Michael Lemon, he had just like he was kind of into Fraser at the time. He's like, I think this guy's gonna be the next big thing, right? And so he wanted to get him in on this movie. Of course. So he flew out to Chicago. He brought a script where um, uh, Fraser was filming with honors, um, and he presents him the script. He presents him the idea. And Fraser was very much, um, he was very interested that someone was this interested in him. He was hesitant because, you know, as we talked about, like, he's kind of trying to not pigeonhole himself into comedies at this point. Oh, boy. Um, Which is, it just happens. And he was also hesitant because he is not a musician, does not know how to play instruments. Right. And this movie is very, you know, music heavy. Yeah. So he gets asked, he's hesitant, but he said he was too flattered to, in his own words, he was too flattered to say no. Yeah, that this guy like flew out here and specifically wanted him because I yeah. believe this is the first movie he's like the first big movie he's done where he's where they wanted him for this role. Yeah, because like in Cena Man, he still had to audition and they wanted him for this. It was he was called for it. Was School Ties kind of the same thing or was that also more of an audition? I think we talked about that being like that was definitely like just a really good audition. for. Yeah, Brady. that was like good audition. And he really pushed for that movie. Yeah, he wanted right. that to happen. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, you know, with um. He comes into this movie, and the movie itself, Airheads, um, it's written by Rich Wilkies. Um, Who is known for... I mean, this is basically the like this is the first movie he ever wrote. Right, exactly. He goes on to write all three Triple X movies. Uh, oh, beautiful. Triple X, uh, just in case you guys are curious, he wrote, it's Triple X, Triple X, State of the Union, and then Triple yes. X, The Return of Xander Cage. Uh, just needed to talk. Just need to acknowledge that state. This of the is the union. non-family. Vin, Vin Diesel, Diesel is in that, right? Yeah. yeah. This is this is the one where the first one's Vin Diesel, the second one's Ice Cube, and then the third one is Vin Diesel and Ice Cube. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's like Fast and Furious, uh, with Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, yeah. and then Too Fast, Too Furious with just Paul Walker, yeah. and then Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift with just Vin Diesel. Yes, but he's only in one scene of that movie. Anyway, like the idea is that. Have I was you a seen good Triple friend X? of Jan. <laughs> it's Han. Han. Very much. Get oh. your shit together. I just watched Fast 9. Couldn't finish it. <laughs> F9, you mean, excuse me, F9, the Fast Saga. F9. 
Because as we as we cannot forget, it's yeah. the Fast and the Furious. Oh, here we too go. Too Fast, Too Furious. Here we go. The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fast and Furious. Yeah. Okay. Fast Five. Fast Six. Fast and Furious Six. Okay. Furious Seven. The Fate of the Furious. Uh, the Fate. The, I'm doing the. Eight. Oh yeah. F eight. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fate of the Furious, and then F nine. The Fast Saga, and the new one is called Furious. Fast X. Oh. Uh, because it's ten. Yes, it's Fast 10. Wow. But it's part one of two. Very smart, guys. Just right all the lines with Bad Boys for Life. Yeah. What but, are they going to bring Will Smith in the mix? <laughs> he's, he's getting to that point. I mean, he, he, uh, you know, he's doing Bad Boys 4 at this point. Um, oh, is ba- he really? Yeah, Bad Boys 3 oh, was pretty geez. good. I like that one. It was. I mean, it was terrible, but it was I mean, goofy. It was, it, was, it was a lot of... There's a witch in it that was not to love. Yeah. Lest we forget Bad Boys 2 where they storm Cuba. Yeah, so. there's like 20 minutes left in the movie. It's and a like, 90s got in type of Cuba. film. It's yes. hard to do it with this era. Anyway, so I have <laughs> anyway. so many yep. fucking quotes. Thought, thoughts about air. I have so many quotes in this movie where I just wrote down because of how outlandish it was. <laughs> this whole thing. Like, I'm going to start saying some of these one-liners. But Hit me with one. I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> just hit me with one right now. He calls him half a butt puppet. <laughs> <laughs> He calls him a shaved ape. <laughs> he does call Steve Steve Shemmy Shemmy. a shaved ape. Um, yeah, and then another quote by Adam Sandler: "Why don't black people like me?" Ninety-three. I mean, <laughs> it's like people just look at you and think you're gonna rob a store. It's like that hasn't happened to me at all. Has it happened to you? <laughs> well, oh my okay. Gosh. So I'll do the final bit of context, and then we can just jump right in because we're chomping at the bit to say some of these okay, lines. Okay. Yeah. So the like Rich Wilkie's wrote this movie. And he said his inspiration was he was watching Dog Day Afternoon, which is a movie story that you and I have talked about before. Lots of times. Um, he's watching Dog Day Afternoon, which is you know a movie about two guys, and they hold up a bank, and it turns into a media circus, an event, and they kind of publicize themselves. Um, we've probably seen a remake of this movie in Mad City, or as Dustin Hoffman called it, Mad Shitty. Yeah. Um, with... With another with, no-name actor. With John Travolta. Oh, um, that our, guy. Our, our <laughs> former hero. Right, yeah. Um... But, you know, he was watching and they said, you know, it'd be good is a comedy version of this, which like kind of defeats the purpose of Dog Day Afternoon is that it is kind of a comedy and then it inverts itself. Anyway, I thought this uh, was a comedy version of Die Hard. No, this is a comedy version of Dog Day Afternoon. And really? that's also he was like he was really into the grunge aesthetic of the early 90s. You know, they filmed the same like parking lot as like the Tacomi Plaza. Oh, did they actually? Yeah. Because oh, you fun. see the building in the background. Oh. Well, I did not notice that. I, how do you did you catch it all like the diehard like overtones in this movie? The I mean, dude I mean, sneaking around. No, the no, I, got, I got the Michael Richards bit of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't they're, get they're, anything they, from Die Hard. They clearly it was, like, a, it was like, in a studio <laughs> for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it, and so he's trying to like. He said he wanted this to be a celebration and also a parody of the early '90s like grunge scene. Which I think it moderately succeeds at. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. I think if the music was not heavy metal, it would have a 50%, not a 29%. <laughs> not 21% <laughs> run. Yeah. Because Stuart has... So how many Stuart acting debuts conflicted. are on here? What's that? How many acting debuts are on here? Oh, so this is actually... I mean, like I said, it's like Brendan Fraser's second big comedy role. Steve Buscemi is, you know, he's he's coming out of the independent Fiction, scene at this time. Right? Pulp Fiction is after this. Is it? He, it's right after this. Because this is his, like, break, kind of, he's starting to break away from the independent scene. Mm-hmm. This is actually the first lead comedy role for Adam Sandler in a movie. Yeah. Um, prior to this, he had been on Saturday Night Live, and he's in Coneheads. And he does oh, a movie where he's a lead, a but he is, like, you know, it doesn't get released. Because he's not a lead. Yeah, until Billy Madison, the He's year a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am shocked. I do want to say, this movie starts. I lean over to back, and I'm like, "How long before he does the voice?" I'm like, "It's an early Adam Sandler. He's gonna do the All right, here we go, I'm Adam Sandler voice." <laughs> he doesn't do it. Doesn't do it. You got to give him some credit. He doesn't do it. Now he I does. I don't think he discovered that part of himself. Yeah. <laughs> he, now he does. He do voices in this movie. Yes, yeah. he absolutely does. Yeah. Oh, he definitely does. Um, but no, I mean that's that's essentially the context of this movie. Oh, they they hired the Michael Lemon to do this movie because he did Heather's before Lemon. this. 
which is just a mess. Really? Yeah, yeah, Heather's, you know, a masterpiece of satire. Yeah. Um, and then basically the rest of his career, he never accomplishes anything of that level before. Right. Yeah. Uh, level again. The only Adam Sandler, Brendan Fraser collaboration. There's not been yes. a movie with Adam Sandler. Brandon they have Fraser not. Since. Um, I think What's we're overdue about? for one. I think so too. We're overdue for him to pop up and hustle too, or whatever. So, so it's it's kind of ironic. I'm just gonna go on a tangent real quick. That they don't cuss in this movie until they're on air. <laughs> yeah, <there's>, yeah. <laughs> that is a weird element of this. Yeah. Well, uh, let's just dive into the plot. What is this rated? Dive into the plot. Is this PG-13 or? I believe this is R. Is it R? I think so. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, I mean, they, there's enough cursing, and you know, it's a. No, it's PG-13. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. PG-13, well, I'll say, take it back. I dig it back. Jesus Christ. Adam Stewart's Sandler. like leaning across the Adam table Adam and Sandler choking me out. Says. You know? I will, I will cut his head off with my dick. <laughs> the 90s were a different time. That was a different time. You could time. get away could with this. <laughs> this could be PG. <laughs> this could be PG. I mean, before, you know, Temple of Doom, this probably might have been PG. Probably. We'd see. Yeah. Okay. It's probably yeah. what they were making it out for. <laughs> then, like, ah. Halfway through shooting, they were like, oh, we can't do this. Brendan Fraser's <laughs> cussing too much on set, guys. Yeah, yeah. he's getting too, he's getting too wild. Yeah. So... Okay. Are we ready to dive yeah, right let's, in? Let's plot, dive, let's plot dive into this movie. Plot, plot, plot mode activated. Point. Plot mode activated. Yeah. Uh, uh, to stop. Hair. You want to start? You just want to start <laughs> right away with the hair? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cue the hair ranking. Oh, easy. God. Welcome. Start with Adam Sandler. Uh, oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Sandman. Uh, I mean, he that's kind of the hair he's had his entire life, right? Just like the, <laughs> the shaved head. Shaped. No. Well, it's like it's very like shaved. I couldn't cut. tell in the beginning if Adam Sandler was gay or a cancer patient. Uh, <laughs> it does have kind of the weird it was just It's a weird blend. Okay, but Brendan Fraser. Obviously, it's a wig. Yes, of course. Yeah. It, it's a questionable wig. It's a questionable wig too, um, with a hat on. With 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 like a hat and like a bandana or something. Mm-hmm. Like he does the bandana look. To, I, the, oh, he's turning it around. It feels like the bandana is kind of a. Um, it's aiding the. It's wig. Try, like trying to hide the seams. Yeah, it is, and I'd say like it. It's slightly successful. Mm-hmm. Like once it got past the whole thing, it's like that's not his hair. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, but it fits the character pretty well, and I like. I I think that this movie has also benefited from the extreme low resolution we had to watch it in. Mm-hmm. That's also true. And that you really just couldn't tell. Like, Did you guys have subtitles when yeah, it first started? I, I and turned it was it like off. five minutes delayed. Yeah, yeah. I, I, turn, I turned mine off. So I knew what was happening. <laughs> yeah. right. It was, way, was way too distracting. I, uh, like, I like that I started it and the subtitles popped because like, we had to watch this on a less than yeah, savory yeah. site. So uh, I had to subscribe I like to something pop- and then cancel it. it was I bizarre. like that it popped up and it was like, you can... um. Sign up. Go to this website to advertise in our subtitles. <laughs> oh my <laughs> <this>? gosh, <laughs> that's the next uh, wave. Um, I think Brendan's hair is notable. It's good. I think like the wig is pretty good, mm-hmm. and it fits the character. And you know me and my long hair obsession. You do Jeff. like long hair. So let's bump it up above. Okay, I think it's a terrible wig, but it fits him perfectly. Yeah, I think the bandana hides like this seems pretty well, and it just I think it I think it and works. like it's almost like the bad wig adds to the, like just kind of the cornball yeah. nature of his character. So let's put it above younger and younger, below twenty bucks. Above younger and younger, below twenty bucks. Yeah, number as four, the new number four. Yeah, wow, number four. Out of like our, and th- we've obviously ranked all those other movies in the past, so they're in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> there will not be continuity problems with you. There will be no kicks. continuity issues. Uh, Never have we ever had a continuity issue on this show. No. <laughs> so, all right. Hair ranking's done out of the way. Okay. Uh, Steve Buscemi, 10 out of 10 hair. Even yeah, though all the time. Oh, he looks tremendous. <laughs> all the time. He looks tremendous in this movie. He always looks like a crackhead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I once saw someone describe Steve Buscemi as looking like a human cigarette. Oh, my God. Like he looks like so the, a stubbed out human yeah. cigarette. Yeah. That's pretty accurate. But, like... In a good way. I wonder if I would go to a bar and 
if I'd even want to approach him. <laughs> well, he'd be that bartender that, you, you know, you're doing all the gestures, try to get their attention. It's not busy, by the way. It's not one of those bars where there's so many people packed. It's not a busy bar, but it's one of those things you're like, you lean up against the bar, trying to get the attention, and then you pull, do the card out trick, and then you lean in with the card. Yeah. He still doesn't pay a fucking attention to you. Yeah, That's he, the he Steve has Buscemi. the midnight to 4.30 a.m. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Cleaning the, ga- the glass, and eventually looks over, uh-huh. it's like, can I get you something? <laughs> and it's like he's, he's the midnight to 4 30 bus boy yeah <laughs> yeah that's buscemi i will say he's kind of aged into a silver fox recently he's looking yeah really he's he, looking he really absolutely good. has he's one of those guys who got better with age like a fine wine i agree a thousand percent did you see his Is high school photos there i mean the teeth are scary the teeth, the teeth are, are, are a little scary i, I he, let me see steve you think god hides in heaven for he too oh, yeah. who saw him creation? and was like this guy's it well he was a firefighter yeah originally uh um, he was a firefighter, and I mean, this is this story is very well known. But he, a firefighter in New York, and on nine eleven, he actually went back to his fire brigade and volunteered, and was on, was at the World Trade Centers, um, pulling guys out. He's like one hundred and twenty pounds. He was, he was there. He's doing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's like him. he's in Staten Island, right? Or King of Staten Island, right? Is he? With Pete Davidson. I'm kind of ironic that I'm we're talking about that on nine eleven. Yeah, it, we are oh, recording this episode yeah. on nine eleven. Wow. You know, right. uh, nothing quite like talking about airheads on nine uh, eleven. Nine eleven, which you guys aren't listening to this episode of nine eleven, so it, it's yeah, fine. You never forget. <laughs> okay. um, um, so this movie starts. Yeah. So this movie starts. We're introduced right away to, to Fraser. Fraser. Yeah. Uh, he's playing Chaz Darby. I never thought I could hear a worse name than. Chaz, Dar- Chaz Darby. No, like Chad, and then because I would just thought Chad's like you know like the classic mm. meme douchey name, and then I heard Chaz, and I'm like, ah, that beats <laughs> they, it. they did him. They, <laughs> they really yeah. did him. Yeah, he's playing Chaz Darby, uh, and he's the lead guitarist and vocalist for a rock group called the Lone Rangers. Oh, Rangers. <laughs> Which we'll find later, folks, that it's a little confusing about yeah, that. Yeah, it is kind of... It is when... I didn't even think about it. I think they point until, that out way too much. Very quickly and often. Yeah, like, yeah that should have... That kind of feels like that should have been like... A final a, act A big joke. laugh joke at the end. Like, this whole thing yeah. doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he's the, he's the lead singer, lead guitarist, and he's desperately trying to get his music heard. His, like, demo tape mm-hmm. or reel. The, the, like, the, the cultural, like area that this movie comes in at is like early 90s grunge these like guys who are middle class um they grew up like cushy but they're just grumpy and mad at the world yeah grumpy, and, grumpy white people yeah grumpy hate white the world grumpy white people who hate the world and are getting it out through their music uh-huh. and feel like they're being oppressed because yeah. no one's listening to their rock music yeah, even if is, it's just because the not, rock music is not the is band bad. to give out cds at yeah. beach <laughs> right this is this is the type of music that you're going to kill somebody and people go crazy about. Yeah. Well, and then like in this type of era, like radio stations don't give you like this like type of fame that supposedly did in the 90s anymore. Yeah. Like if we, we remade this movie today, it'd be like a fight to like get it on Spotify, yeah. which to do that, it's just click, click, click. Yeah, click okay, couple. there it is. <laughs> we're on, on Spotify. We're on Sp- we are on Spotify. Like it didn't yeah. take us that long. We should do a movie about how we can't have us trying to get Travolting on Spotify. <laughs> And how difficult it was. It was going to be like three minutes. AKA long. A sun, <laughs> be an up hour long. for my Sunday. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, so yeah, like he's trying to get it played. He the the radio stations keep ignoring him. He can't get to perform at any of the big venues in town. And he's They're been, in L.A. Yeah, and he's been trying to get it like get into this radio station, this particular radio station, yes, KPPX, for a while. No, like, because, like, he does this bit where he, like, dresses up like a delivery guy. Well, that's to get into the record label's office. Mm-hmm. Right. We're Not go- the radio station? No, it's the record label that he's trying to get with. I can't right. remember what they call the record, because later someone comes from Capitol Records, but this is not Capitol Records. Uh, yeah. Well, that's they, a fake guy. Yeah, Harold that's Ramis, the cop who's trying to get in. Yeah. I think this. I, don't know how, I remember they just they found a way to distinguish. They distinguish that he's not a cop by asking him <laughs> questions only real metal rockers would know. <laughs> and he answers, and he answers with like the stock answers. Yes. Yeah. 
But yeah, so he's sneaking into this like record label, and they catch him like almost right yeah. away. There's a really fun oneer of him. Yeah, going through the record yeah, label. They, yeah. They basically knock out the whole scene in one, and it's mm-hmm. like a minute and a half to two minutes long, mm-hmm. right? Which is economical, smart, and also kind of looks nice. Yeah. And then it cuts to one of my favorite argument scenes of all time. <laughs> with him and his girlfriend. <laughs> his girlfriend. I don't remember her name. Um, she is. Oh God. Um. Amy Loc- Locaine as Kayla. Yeah. Sir, did you recognize her? Yes, I did, Jeff. Uh, yes. Uh, she is the she most also, toxic relationship of all time. Also plays the love interest in another Brendan Fraser movie. Love she's, interest of Brendan Fraser. She's Sally in School she's Ties. She's Sally in School Ties. She looks like she could be in Greece. Which, by the way, speaks to her level of performance. Because in School Ties, she is like a goody two shoes schoolgirl. In this movie, she's. A leather rock chick yeah so i mean hey kudos to her mm-hmm. she goes she goes back and forth yeah and i guess got, and fraser enjoyed working with her so he was happy to have her back got the range got yes. the range yeah so they argue and then it doesn't end well for yeah <laughs> because like she comes in she's like yeah i had to work all day and you're just sitting here living the rock and roll lifestyle laying in bed with your shirt off it'll come babe i'm trying <laughs> to sell my records like fraser is I think, I don't think this is his best performance of the ones we've covered. No. I think he's kind of overshadowed by the supporting cast in this, but he's still good. And this is one of the scenes where he like really is selling kind of just the pathetic nature of this guy. Yeah. Because yeah. his girlfriend comes and she's like, I have to work all day. I have to do all this stuff. And meanwhile, you're just like breaking into offices <laughs> and trying to hand off your CD. Yeah. So she leaves him. Yes. Well, she kicks him out. Kicks him well, out. Well, hold on. She throws out... <laughs> millions of records <laughs> that are in the house <laughs> yeah it ha- all happens so quick yeah <laughs> like she- fuck you and then brendan leaves yeah and then he- it cuts to and it cuts to him with the boys the boys yeah um rex and pip the rex. Fuck in the that sand. bitch <laughs> yeah rex says uh, steve buscemi he's like fuck that bitch man <laughs> i got records to make <laughs> adam sandler studios but to run the corner eating sand yeah that's his character yeah, what's his name pip Oof. Yeah. yeah, Adam Sandler's <laughs> playing Pip. Um, and this is like kind of just the proto Sandler performance. Yeah. Like this is just what he kind of, you know when you think of like the bad Sandler movies, this is kind of the performance he does in them. You just mean the <laughs> Sandler movies and then there's uncut gems. Well, there's there's a few good comedies. There's a few. But like it's a few good soppy ones. Click. And, yeah, like click. Oh, Click's man. fine. Click. And he but he's I kind of don't mind him in this role in this movie because he's a supporting player. Yeah. Like, this is kind of like... We talked about this with Pauly Shore um, in our son-in-law episode. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, that Sandler works best when he's kind of like a supporting bit. Okay. When he's when he's doing this kind of role. But, like, I don't know, man. Like he because killed it for Click. When we talked about know. son-in-law, like, I was almost like... I enjoyed... Holly Shore more in that than I did in Encino well, Man. I preferred him in Encino Man. I preferred him as in Son in Law, <laughs> as we talked about. Um, as we definitely talked about. But, you know, like Sandler is great as a lead when he's doing, you know, his grand, thing. When he's, I don't even say, think when he's doing his thing, when he's not doing his thing. Yeah. Because, like, right, that's true. I would consider it far from his thing. Yeah. Like, I would consider this, like, his thing. Yeah. yeah. Like you know, Billy Madison. But this is Waterboy. Waterboy. Waterboy is his thing. Yeah. But like Billy Madison is like kind of outside of his thing. Clicks a little bit. Like when he's given a character to play. Pixel right. is yeah. his thing. Pixel. <laughs> like when he's given a character to play, he's really good. When it's just him doing, a am Adam Shan- Like Hubie Halloween. I'm Adam who here Sam- has seen? Who has Hubie seen Halloween. Hubie Halloween? Oh my god! I have not I seen. Like Hubie Hubie I've seen Hubie Halloween. That. It has one great joke in it. Okay. <laughs> um, one exceptional joke. Is but that whenever like, he's the supporter, yeah, he's just a goofball. Yeah, but it kind of works as like this, like he kind like he you're not getting too much of person. this bit when it's all when it's all this character, you know, Pip. Like Hubie Halloween is all Pip. <laughs> it's like two and a half hours of Pip. Yeah. Um. Cool. So then, <laughs> where can I find that movie? We're with it's the on boys. Netflix. Oh jeez, like I kind of, it kind of has a nice Halloween aesthetic to it. Um, I've, it's not, like, her, I've heard mixed things, not terrible like, things. It's not a good movie. He's kind like he's doing like the 
I'm Adam Sandler, voiced the entire movie. It's like 90 minutes of him. Uh, All right, here I am. I'm coming in. Um, it's it's I'm like watching, this I'm impression the ADR of you. for that. Yeah. I'm loving this impression, Jeff. There's one part where he's I'm riding a bike down the road, and he's just like projectile vomiting across the entire town. It's crazy. Um, anyway, watch Who Be Halloween. What, what, what do you got to lose? 90 minutes of your time? Yes. <laughs> like, that's exactly what I Do you know lose. what I do for a podcast, Jeff? <laughs> you lose 90 minutes of your time daily. Yes. Um, anyway, so yes, they, um, they're, they're all talking about their, like how they want to get their music heard Mm -hmm. and they're at a venue, um, trying to get it played and they're shut down by the venue's host, Michael McKean, who I love, who is great in this. Mm -hmm. Michael McKean's very good in this movie. Yeah. And everyone Uh, else comes to love him as well. He's cast in this movie based off of Spinal Tap. Yeah. Um. I'm not based off of it. He was well known for other things, but like because of that music, that movie's music connotations, he gets brought into this. Right. Yeah. So this guy's what? Like a. He's the he's the owner of the radio station and the DJ for that. Yeah, he's like the co DJ of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So there's there's two characters we meet here. I forget. So there's two characters we meet. One is. Michael McKean is Milo, who's the manager of the radio station. The other one is Joe Mantegna as uh, the as the Joe shark, Mantegna. as the shark who's the DJ. Mm-hmm. So we meet the DJ and the manager of the radio station. They're putting on a performance at a venue. David Rossi from Criminal Minds himself. David Rossi of Criminal Minds. He was also mm-hmm. Joey Zaza in The Godfather Part Three. Yes. Zaza. Zaza. Oh my god. <laughs> Zaza. <laughs> um, Did you watch Godfather? Part three recently, Jeff? Like a year ago. Uh, I just there's this one part where Andy Garcia it. is just like Zaza! <laughs> beats um, me. Yeah. But yeah, so we meet those two, and they don't give the Lone Rangers the time of day. Right. So the Lone like Who'd they pick though? What's the band name they pick? Uh, it's um the Sons of Thunder. <laughs> it's the Sons of Thunder. And they're played by the, the Sons ba- of Thunder, yes. and then they go to Lone Ranger. They're yeah. like, ugh. <laughs> so yeah, Sons of Thunder, so much better. So yeah. much better. They, this is when they do make the point about the Lone Rangers, right? The name. I think so. Yeah, they're like the Lone Rangers. Like you, you can't, can't pluralize, pluralize Lone. lone. <laughs> they <laughs> like, said this five times throughout the movie. Yeah, <laughs> the writer was like, "That's it. That's the good shit right That's there." The good punchline. <laughs> Sprinkle it out. But I mean, like in theory, you can pluralize Lone, like. The Lone Rangers would just be, they are the Lones. They are like the lone group of Rangers. Yeah. Or, like this, they're, they're, this grammatical battle that they <laughs> ensue does not entirely add up to me. Right. Because you can have like Lone Rangers as in there yeah. are single Rangers. Uh, Adam. Uh, there's single like rangers scattered around this place that are n- known as the lone rangers yeah. that they hang out. Like or if, you could do the lone rangers like a, there's a group of rangers that hang yeah. out, but they hang out by themselves. Yes. They're the lone rangers. So there's two fallacies with this argument. Yeah. If every podcaster in the world dropped dead right now, except for us, we'd be the lone podcasters. <laughs> right. Like, it's not that insane to think <laughs> it's a about. a good name, actually. The before. lone pod. What if we change the name of this to the lone podcasters? We are podcast. not changing the name to lone podcasters. <laughs> Jeff, you and I fought for hours about the name of the podcast. Yes, you get to Joe Pesci, it. you will change it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with honors, right? Um, okay, so they get rejected, and th- they don't really have a decision. Pro- oh, they go back to their apartment, where Steve Buscemi Rex has a bunch of fake guns. They're all water guns, but he's mm-hmm. painting them black. Yeah, to look like real guns. And this is when Chaz has an idea. We don't really see him pitching the idea, do we? No, we don't. We see him basically saying, like, we got to do something. Like, because like, they're all like, you know, like someone will reach out to us and we'll, you know, we'll pick up records. It's like, no, you got to take it, guys. Yeah. You got to reach out and take the opportunity. We'll grab it by the ball. Grab it yeah, by the ball. Grab, but we never see him be like, we're going to hold up. We're going to, like, break in the radio station. Well, like, is that their plan? Like, yeah, because it just immediately cuts to them at the radio no, station. No, it wasn't, though. So it wasn't their plan. They were trying to just get in there. Yeah. And they got it. so, <laughs> but they bring the fake guns. They were gonna metaphorically hold them right, hostage. but they were just gonna go in there and be like, "Hey, play our fucking yeah. shit." Yeah, yeah. They didn't. And they had guns in case. He, it was Buscemi who pulled out the gun first, yeah. right? But they all brought the of course guns. he did. But he only like did they had it this backup because, plan going, except Adam Sandler. <laughs> he only did it because of the. I don't know nothing s- about having a gun. Yeah, it was like the station manager <laughs> called him like the shaved ape, and then he pulled out yeah. the gun. 
So I don't think it was a part of the original plan to pull out the guns. But they brought them. Yeah. So they try to go through this back door. Yeah. And which I don't know why, what kind of card they were trying to get in with this. <laughs> yeah, like whatever. it's a, it's a and card. Then, and then uh, Rex squirts juice at the thing. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, I don't understand how that they would... put like chili yeah, sauce a, in these guns or something. Yeah, they put shit, chili sauce in the guns so it burns realize, the eyes. I didn't realize that until the very end of the movie when the text came up. I'm like, oh, they were full of chili sauce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When did that happen? At the beginning, they do establish that like Rex is a bunch of chili. There's a lot of things in this movie that just kind of happen. Yeah, it don't make sense. So and, they so they walk up the stairway to the top yes. of the building. Uh, Rex and Chaz. Yeah, Rex and Chaz. Adam Sandler down there. there. And Pip's downstairs, and then as he's down, the door opens and hits him in the face. Wait, but like, they go up the stairs. Where are you going? (laughs) (laughs) They think there's like a hatch on the roof. It's like a cool shot of LA. It's like, but where is going? (laughs) They're just going to try and clamber through the roof. So meanwhile, then this beautiful lady opens up the door, hits Pip right in the fucking mouth. Yeah. The one advantage this movie has is that because it's like a parody of idiot rocks rockers in the early nineties, like it can get away with illogical decisions oh, yeah. being made for the purpose of the movie. Yeah, like you're like, you why, like so. why are they going on the roof? It's like, well, they wanted a cool shot of LA and they had to get, they had to get these two guys away from the third guy for 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well they're idiots. They had, they want to see if they could climb in through like a skylight or something. Right. Uh, so Pip gets hit in the face with the door. This He's like, oh, my face out. hurts. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Adam oh, and she falls in love yes, right like, away. There's music in the background. Yeah. Every time I go away, yeah. I can feel my home. And then she's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Oh, she's back. Off. She comes. She has like ice or something in a she's bag. Back with ice. She says, "I she's just like, came out for a cigarette. I'm gonna run and grab you some ice." Yeah. She runs in to grab him some ice. And it comes back out. Gives comes him back a bag out, of ice. and then the door goes to shut, and they drop a backpack. Drops a backpack that with the incredible strap precision <laughs> catches the ledge of the door. Like, so then the pack itself ledges itself between the opening and the door itself. So yes. it's open. Not a like rock. how many times. Did they rewrite that part? <laughs> <laughs> How'd they be like, all right, what's his plan here? Well, he drops a bag. And Who's, I didn't even uh, see this bag yeah. on them. <laughs> it must have just like been there. Yeah. Who's reading there. the sides on the day? It's like, wait a second. Hold on. What? He drops the bag. Like, <laughs> why, does, why does the bag? Maybe what happened was originally the bag was supposed to drop and yeah. be like in between the door right. and the opening. But they're like, no, be cool. But on one take, on like on just one take or whatever, it just happened to catch the strap yeah. and it worked the same way. Like, oh, that's cooler. We'll use that. Yeah, take. it's one of those little things in film where I'm sure they did not. Pl- I'm sure like not in the writing process. They weren't like, oh, it attaches to the top. I'm sure they were like, well, he drops it and blocks the door. Right. And then, like, on the day, they probably were just like, it would be a little cooler if it did this. Because they're cool guys, as we all know. They're fun guys. But they're stupid. They're stupid. Right. So, whatever. The the bag catches the door. We're getting really in the weeds on this bag. Yeah. Uh, Right. They get get in there, and everyone's uh, like, well, they belong here, right? It's like, Yeah, no one says anything about it. Because, obviously, the way to get in there. Until they finally get into the um Into the... the, the, uh, the live no, the DJ booth the DJ booth have you guys ever heard of like the easiest way to get into any single building at all is wear a reflective vest and carry a ladder yeah it's just like if you walk up to a building with a reflective vest and a ladder people will open doors for you so you can like get in and no yeah. guards or anybody will question points, you points 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 right <laughs> exactly <laughs> start your board points, points points coming through corner Alternatively, dressing like a firefighter and coming up with a ladder. Be like, oh, no. Right, or that too. Something's happening on the They might just be concerned why there's no other firefighters and no fire truck. Right. Why you're just charging into a building. Exactly. <laughs> um, um, so they get in here, and, they and talk, all they're three talking of them the are, just, are just <laughs> standing behind this guy <laughs> while he's you know giving his talk, talk radio yeah. discussion. He's like, all right, and here we go, coming in. Here's another Sons of Thunder. <laughs> coming to you to KPXC, LA, at 2 in the morning. Ah. And then he just kind of slowly turns around. He's like, can I help you? He says, what the fuck are you guys doing here? The logic of this radio station confuses me. The Be- calmness of this man. <laughs> <laughs> <to> just, <laughs> well, and like, what do you do? You, do we ever see him like push a button or lower a fader to like mute the mic in the radio station? Well, he did. So, so he goes to press uh, on for the music. Right. And then it turns the mic off. Right. 
Yeah. And so now he's so. talking to these guys, and the, they, they give their pitch. They give their pitch. They say, we don't limit ourselves to labels. He's like, what kind of music do you play? And they say, we don't limit ourselves to labels. It's like, okay, what it's you play? It's a bad sign. Yeah. And so he's he's kind of just fascinated by and this. And then Chaz starts going off on, yeah. on corporate heads. And he just starts destroying capitalism. And then fucking DJ just swings the mic around. Yeah. It's like, all turns right. Turns live on air, which I don't know how they don't recognize that they're <laughs> going live. Right. Like, oh, a mic's in on Not our face. Not that there's now. like lights that go on that say right. you're on the air. Yeah. Or the mic in your fucking face. Or that. Because it does take them a second to put together that, they've, that they're broadcasting. And also, yeah. there are supervisors that listen to the radio station in the background. And so, okay, I want to say, like, a fun fact, because, like, I worked at a radio station. So, I used to work the Graveyard this Shift. This the 90s, Stuart. I, I, I hear you. And, like, the technology <laughs> has not changed. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, the technology boy. we were using for, radio, for, like, the radio work was, like, the same from, like, the early 2000s. Like, it had not changed. And so... But I would work like the graveyard shift when there's no one at the station. And so I'm literally just there and I'm like plugging away at commercials and then fading over to segments. And my boss told me like my first day, it's like, so I have like this like thing where um, if there's like dead air and like the computer will register that no audio is playing for longer than 60 seconds, it'll send me a text message. So then I can reach out to you and be like, yo, there's dead air. Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. There was, like, one time that, like, I thought I had, like, enough time to go to the bathroom before, yeah. like, a commercial break. And I went, and I evidently missed it. But I didn't hear it because there weren't any, like, radio speakers yeah. in the bathroom at the station. So then I got so it's out. Just it went to the <laughs> so no, It just went to the next, like, segment. And there was, like, 60 seconds of dead air for, com for the commercial that I didn't put in. And I'm sitting in my chair, and I, I get a text from my boss, like, yo, I just got a 60-second dead air alert. Is everything cool? I'm like, oh, shit, I just went to the bathroom. I totally, like, didn't realize that. <laughs> so. Bloop. Yeah. Bloop. So this whole thing that they can go live on air and like it's not like really being caught is yeah. complete bullshit. But whatever, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's all I had to yeah. throw in there. The chat starts going off, mm -hmm. um, and he's like, "You're gonna play our tape." Is this when the manager comes in? No. Yeah. So this is where everyone starts to listen in because they're like, "Oh shit, these guys are these guys are for slandering real. us. They're legit on live radio." And apparently, every person in LA is listening to this radio station. <laughs> it cuts right, to like the corporate office. It cuts to all these bars. Yeah. Everybody's listening. Yeah. It cuts to the, the girlfriend. to heavy is... death metal. Yeah, it's like dentist office. Like he looks up and like, <laughs> 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 that doesn't happen, but that would have been a good bit. And the girlfriend's right. like outside. Yeah. Listening to her. I don't know how, where she's listening to they this radio missed, station. They missed the opportunity for that bit, Jeff. Yeah, that like, they could have been cut to an old person's home that's like listening to a death metal radio station. Yeah, they could have yeah. cut to like a school playground. Like, yeah. That, they missed a bit. They missed a, they good, missed a bit. good bit. We should rewrite this movie. Um, Airheads. So anyway, everyone and their mother's listening to this yes. slander of corporate America. And As they should be. So Milo storms in. And he's like, yeah, I'm out of here. What are you doing? And he's like, and Joe Mantegna, um, the shark. I'm just going to call him the shark. Mm -hmm. It's just like, David I'm Rossi. the DJ. I can play whatever I want. You gave me freedom on this. Yeah, right. And so he's like, get these guys out of here. And that's when Buscemi... Is that when they bring out the gun? That's when he calls him like a shaved ape. It's like, get this yeah. shaved ape get out of here. Get this fucking shaved ape out of here. And then he pulls out the, the yeah. squirt I gun. I wish he had an English accent. <laughs> oh my get God. This it shaved made it. Ape get this shaved get ape, this shaved out, ape out, of out of here. here. He should have been doing his uh, Spinal Tap voice. Why was I doing it in Australia when I just did that? Get no. this shaved ape out of yeah, here. Get this shaved <laughs> ape out of here. Filmed so, in no, I was in no, I've been it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, they he pulls out the weapon. Yes, the, the, these Uzis. Yeah, <laughs> Uzi squirt guns. <laughs> these squirties. I've never seen an Uzi squirt gun before in my yeah. life. For, like Predator Two, the kid in the graveyard scene who points the Uzi squirt gun at the predator who recognizes that it's a fake gun. Evidently, yeah. the manager is not able to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's like, and but they're still broadcasting. Yeah. And suddenly yeah. everyone just starts screaming. The scam broadcast all over the air. All over LA. All yeah. over the country. Yeah. All over um, the world. This is when they start cussing. Right. Yeah. And, and so, cuss on air, and so cuss now on they air. pull the guns. Chaz just kind of kicks it up to 11. He's like, you're going to play our music. Yeah. Um, so they're like, all right, we just want one song. That's all. You play our song and we'll so, leave. Like all this is happening and Chaz is like actually trying to be reasonable yeah. with an uzi in his hand it's like, <laughs> right. i just want my music played i just want to be I heard one man. song that's what you played. heard man so they go they get their cd and he's like well we don't fucking have cds we have cassettes right so, so like, they get a fuck they get a converter 
Yeah, it's it's like they, <laughs> they like they brought like a roll of tape, like a big ass roll of tape. Yeah, yeah. And they go into this other room where this black guy is just jamming out on the yeah. guitar. Yeah, and, and they like <laughs> hold him up. Right away, we get racial jokes. Yeah, yeah right. Racial jokes from and the sand himself. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is this is you know. It's the Sandman. I listen to another rap. fucking white man. I, yeah. I listen to rap music all the time, and <laughs> Sandler only gets away with this in the sense that he's trying to parody the white guy who would think like this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, otherwise, like even <laughs> be very, very problematic. There's yeah. still moments where it can be, but it's at least better because it's parody. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at the same time, this is happening. We do have to talk about the Michael Richards plotline, um, even if it's like kind of irrelevant. Because, like, Michael Richards, Kramer himself, is playing, like, the lawyer for the radio station. Right. And they go, while they're trying to get this converter, Chaz is, like, round up all the the staff and put them in the conference room. Mm-hmm. And Michael Richards, uh, like, cl- is, like, he gets this, like, slapstick routine where he's, like, tripping over desks and, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This plot line is fucking hilarious. He's having this He whole- spends the whole movie in a fucking AC team. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and the like, vents of <laughs> it's just Michael. Now, well, it's the diehard like bit that I was so, laughing. So here's at. the thing: like, it, I was like, "Oh, this is funny," and then I picked up what Michael Richards is trying to play. Uh, Michael Richards is trying trying to play like a Jewish accountant. <laughs> um, Michael Richards succeeds has not worked in a major capacity in like you know twenty years or so. Um, based on the fact that he went on a rant at a comedy club. About how the Jews are taking over the world. So, you know, in hindsight, this scene, you're like, oh, this is not just Michael Richards making a joke. This is Michael Richards. This is Michael Richards trying just to make a point. Making a point about how he feels about the right. Jew about the Jewish people. Uh, so, you know, not the best look. So he's scared, shitless, yes. crawling on the floor the whole movie. Yes. He's like tripping over desks. He somehow gets a hold. He gets a hold of the cops. He's the one who calls the police and lets them know yeah. there's a guys in here with guns. Yeah, the LAPD are very relaxed in this movie. <laughs> they're they're, all right, so let's let's talk about the one single cop <laughs> who shows that, up. That shows up, and Adam Sandler walks out, <laughs> and they mimic the law. <laughs> they can't get out. And then, they, like, they there's one cop that needs exit, right? Yeah, right. Because what happens before the cops show up? They get the converter set up, right? Yeah. yeah, they get the converter set up and they're starting to convert the CD into the cassette. And that's when it plays over this bit with Adam Sandler and the cop. Yeah, but the, so the tape burns out. Yeah, because it's an old converter. Yeah, right. and then it catches, the, on, catches fire on fire. Or whatever. Dude pours so his Miller light yeah. into it. <laughs> that's, that's when they leave because they're like, fuck, we got to go get the yeah. other tape. And then there's cops parked outside. Yeah, yeah. of course. And they're all like, ooh. So now they're, tra- now, they're, now they're trapped inside and they're committed. They have to play hostage taker roles. Yeah. yeah. And Buscemi's, like, really locked into it. Chaz, like, starts getting it. Pip has no idea what's happening at any time. Yeah. He's like, these are our friends. He's like, these are our I, friends. I fall in love I with this I fall in love with you. It's me, Adam Chandler, the same man himself, Pip. Can you do Uh-oh. that? Hold on. Uh, challenge, Jeff. Can you do that voice, but Australian? All right, here we go, isn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Here we go, isn't it? <laughs> we got, oh, it's, it's a little six-foot swell here. That's English. Oh, I, I do want to say, um, R.I.P. Queen Elizabeth II. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Uh, yeah, you know, if we're if we're gonna make fun of the British culture, we gotta make fun right. of them in style. Well, Jeff, we rest all... in peace. Oh, uh, the poor little queen. Oh, oh uh, ain't it? We already t- we, well, we already Could, went on. Was a she longer... eating oatmeal? What, what did she choke on? <laughs> we we already went on this Sorry. rant when we but talked about bangers and mash, isn't it? Bangers and mash. There's only two people like two kinds of people I can't stand. One who's uh, uh, intolerant of other people's cultures, and the Dutch. (laughs) (laughs) Two different people I can't. Fucking Dutch. (laughs) People intolerant of people's cultures. In comes Prince Charles. (laughs) King Charles. King Charles. King Charles. King Charles. Very. Has to be flown from the fucking Bahamas because he (laughs) doesn't know what to do. God rest our soul. We're getting some youthful energy into the crown, at least. 73 yeah. year old King Charles. <laughs> youthful <laughs> energy. <laughs> this guy ain't going to parachute out of a plane. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth yeah. did that. <laughs> oh my gosh. The kids think I'm cool because I'm parachuting from a plane. Chip, 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 chip. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
what if two weeks from now she just comes back? Oh my <laughs> <Yeah>. god. <laughs> The I'm biggest storming from the gulag. The <laughs> biggest goof of them all. So long as I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm not uh, dead yet. I'm not dead yet. All right, Charles, give me the cow crown. Give me that crown back, you shit. <laughs> you fucking twat. We just alienated all of our British yeah, audience. Yeah, the British audience is tuned out. But honestly, to this point, I feel like 70% of uh, uh, Brits don't really support the monarchy in general, though. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that the case? You know, He's taking over the crown with forty percent approval. Yeah. So yeah. You know what the actual? I think not a not a single English person has watched a Brendan Fraser movie. <laughs> they don't <laughs> believe in them. They think he's a bit. Um. Okay. So you know what the real ro royalty we need to talk about is is the the Lone Rangers. Oh yeah. Um. Because they're the kings of rock and roll. Let's see how I came brought back that. See how yeah. I brought back from my own tangent. That was nice, Jeff. That was Thank really you. Good job. Yeah. So Uzis. Yeah. In so, their face. So now they're trapped in here with all of these record or these radio station employees. And the employees are still bagging on them for fucking <laughs> they're talking like shit the about Lone them. Rangers. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, I think David Arquette is like, your music sucks. <laughs> and Rex is like, just play the fucking music. <laughs> just play the fucking song. So uh, I feel like whatever happens next, there's a few different montages. So there's the, like. The whole thing after about thirty minutes is they try to get this tape. Yeah. So and this tape, uh, the Chaz's girlfriend we threw just out the with. fucking window. Yeah, they're like, "Well, the the film burned, so the only other copy of the song that we have is a cassette tape. It's in my car. That my girl. Or it's in my right. girlfriend's car. Right. And she's pissed off yeah. and throws the fucking tape on it the street. Just quit. He's like, "It's in my girlfriend's car," and then it just cuts, cuts to her. To her she gets in the, the car. car. She's like, "What is this shitty music?" And she pops out the tape and she throws it out the window. Do we ever figure out? how they retrieve the tape yeah so we do we do see I it think I, we do I think see I fell it. asleep well because <laughs> there's a bit that like comes back where that you just as the, ever the story's happening we cut back to the tape on the street getting like getting fucking destroyed. run over yeah. a dog pees on it there's a fucking hydraulics car just you know, like bouncing it. on it yeah and, and uh, yeah and so yeah after that yeah like there's 30 minutes of like the cop business happening outside. Right. So it's Chris, <laughs> the cop, this officer's actually really good. Ernie Hudson. Yeah. And he's like trying to negotiate. Yeah, like, we can't go in with violence yet, guys. Yeah. And then SWAT shows up. Yeah. And they're just ready to bust in there. But the head of SWAT is having like some marital issues. <laughs> uh, so he's on the phone with what? fucking Michael really? inside yeah. just spilling his there's fucking... like six to seven plot lines occurring at this point in the movie yeah which is why it's a little hard to kind of parse discussing this yeah because simultaneously what happens at this point is we have Chaz um Pip and Rex holding up all the employees meanwhile Pip is falling in falling love. in love with the <laughs> secretary yeah. yeah while Milo um Michael McKean is like trying to hide that he was going to transition the radio station to classic rock over the weekend without telling the staff and firing them all. Right. And at the same time, Chaz is trying to get his girlfriend to bring the tape. He's negotiating with Ernie Hudson, the cop outside. Chris Farley is playing a cop who's like brand new at the job, learning from Ernie Hudson, who's sent to retrieve the tape. Mm -hmm. There's a SWAT guy who's having extramarital issues yeah. on the phone with Michael Richards, who's inside clambering through the tents, like or climbing through the vents like he's a diehard. There's so much happening. And Let me just point. restructure. And there's, <laughs> and there's thousands of people gathered outside. Yeah, there's outside. like thousands of fans yeah! are showing up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and and so the cop, the fat cop, Chris Tim, I'm going to call him Tim, Dill Tim Dillon. He goes into this club, <laughs> this nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we should just talk about the bits because it, it's it's very hard to structure. Chris Farley, yeah. not fully utilized. Yeah, like to the extent that other films have utilized Farley. Every time he popped, I'm like, oh, he's I love Chris Farley. He's so funny. And they don't ask him to do much of Chris yeah. Farley things. So yeah. he goes into Whiskey A Go Go. Yes. Which Whiskey is kind a -Go -Go, of a that is famous of fucking bar nightclub in yeah. LA. And they're playing heavy metal. Rob Zombie is performing. Rob Zombie's performing. It's fucking a mosh pit in yeah. the middle. He just walks in and this fucking police officer is just 
getting shoved around in the middle of this there, mosh. There's, there's like one kind of good like, bit. Oh my god! Where like they only have like one photo of Chaz's girlfriend in a swim in like a swimsuit or underwear or whatever. And so he goes to this bar and he's like, "All right, so I'm looking for a, a blonde in tight leather." And as he's saying that, the line to get into the bar is all blondes and wearing tight yeah, leather. And right. there's just kind of a cute little bit. He goes, "Okay, this would be fun." So he stumbles across the bar, sees her, and it's like, "Hey." Chaz, are you Kayla? Are you Kayla? Chaz needs the tape. It's like fuck there's a whole you. situation. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck him. Fuck Chaz. I'm leaving. Yeah. And so she leaves, and then Chris he stumbles like, across these three heavy metal yeah, like dudes. thugs. Like and thug one, thug two, and thug three. Yeah. <laughs> and thug one rips the badge off of him. Yeah. Eats it or some shit. Like he puts yeah, it in his mouth. His and mouth and so in it. retaliation, Chris Farley rips out his nipple ring. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what are you going to do about it? Takes the improvised. Ching. <laughs> yeah. And then he like gets an advice. Like, oh my God. He does yeah. the Chris Farley yell. <laughs> And uh, what, it cuts to Kayla getting in her car and driving away. Immediately opens up to the radio station. Here's all the commotion happening. Yeah, so now she understands what's happening. Does a U-turn in the middle of the street, yeah. blocking all traffic, finds the tape that is currently That's being getting thing. pissed on by a dog. People to stop in the middle of traffic. What's like, Yui's? Oh, Yui's, yeah. Uh, this dog pissing on the tape. She grabs it, gets in the car, and drives off to the radio station. Meanwhile, there's more business with the Jewish accountant guy going yeah, in. Michael Richards. Because he's, uh, he's talking to the SWAT guy, and yeah, he's like, you're going to get like, a real gun. Yeah, they give him a real Uzi. They give him a real gun. Yeah. I don't yeah. know where. How? how? So I, I don't know, know how like, He like, clambers through a vent in the yeah. roof, and a SWAT guy in a helicopter like throws him a gun. <laughs> Not that the SWAT guy could have crawled in through the fucking roof <laughs> yeah. the same guy came out of. Right, 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 right. They just send Michael Richards in to, like, <laughs> take, take You're going to be my eyes and ears in there. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So, uh, the soonest thing that I remember is um, they try to play the tape, but the tape's, like, too busted. Yeah, the tape's busted, so they can't play it because the girlfriend yeah. shows up. And then they get a lawyer, another lawyer guy. So the douchebag with the fucking weird chin hair shows yeah, up again. Yeah, the, the, the guy who declined Fraser at the beginning of the movie, right. the, yeah. the record label. He comes over. He comes over and he's like, all right, we'll make a deal. Because at you this got, point, they're the biggest thing. Yeah, there's like a television. huge like a concert crowd for, that's outside right. being held up by the cops. Yeah, so the Lone Rangers are it. Right yeah, and now. he's like, we can make a deal. No publicity is bad publicity. Right. Like, we can make this. We can spin this. We have an army of lawyers. We can get you out in six months. Yeah. If you go to prison. And Brendan goes, have you heard any songs? Have you heard any of our music? Because he won't, like, this this is their quest for validation. For, like, like, what's the word they keep using? They keep using a word in this movie about what they're looking for. I can't remember what it was. Um... It, but they're basically looking for like authenticity in yeah. their in their music and how they're listened to. Yeah. Um, so and he's like, Chaz is stuck on the idea of like, yeah. I just want to play my music yeah. on the radio. They they're kind of like forced into being famous by accident. Yeah. And so they <laughs> he comes in with this contract. Yeah. He's like, all right, just sign it. We'll get you done. Everything's deal. He's like, babe, you heard the music, and they're like, no. And he's like, here's what I think of your contract, and he wipes his ass. With it. <laughs> Yeah, like Fraser's very good at this point in the movie. Yeah, like Fraser once he starts kind of going off near the end, I feel like that's where his strength lies in yeah. the movie. Yeah, like he's like, you only want my contract, and he's you know wipes his ass. I think meanwhile, person. like uh, what I find is they keep walking outside. Yeah, and just fucking causing mayhem, and then <laughs> going back inside. Right. I always thought like maybe it's like because all three of them come outside yeah. but then at some point all three of them do come outside no yeah. uzis they're just throwing tickets yeah, the cops in just taking them down yeah. right chaz is on top of a cop car going crazy and then the girlfriend shows up they start making Remember? out in yeah the so the girl he brings the girlfriend inside and they, they got a this, new hostage <laughs> there's yeah. like a fucking whole 10 minute toxic argument that goes yeah. on the the movie just gets insane at this point <laughs> yeah. like where's the fake concert scene that's at the end 
I, are we there yet? No. So no. we're getting there. So there's like the tape doesn't play. Okay. There's a All right. Fucking... Let me just restructure. <laughs> What's going on? There's no structure. I'm gonna do, let me let me do the breakdown. I'm gonna break this. I'm gonna break this shit down so hard. Okay. So. The Lone Rangers are holding all these people hostage. Yeah. They get the tape from the girlfriend who Fraser makes up with. Because he talks about how like he actually does love her. And she falls back in love with right. him. So they're settled. Michael Richards pops down from the ceiling with an assault white. With a, a oh, Uzi. Yes. And starts lay it, letting loose. Well, no. So he doesn't let loose. Oh, yeah. So he has his MP5. He's holding it. I don't know what he's holding on to he's like, in the vent. He's like but hanging he's down from Hanging from the fucking vent. They hit him and the gun drops. Yeah, so so DJ, this is when DJ kind of becomes cool. Yeah. He's like, fuck it, I'll hit this guy. Yeah. And the MP5 drops and it sprays like 50 rounds yeah. with nobody pulling the trigger. Because at this point, the cops had figured out that they're not real guns and they're getting right. ready to storm. But the then this gun. starts shooting and they're like, oh shit, they are real guns. Right. Um, not realizing it's the gun that they sent yeah. into the building. Yeah. So now the DJ gets the gun, but he hands it back to the Lone Rangers because he's kind of been converted. That this yeah, is, he's like, I don't want this fucking He's thing. like, this is real rock. I respect this because he had just learned about Milo's plan to turn this into a yeah, classic rock Yeah, so he's kind of on their side now. Everyone listening to this episode right now is like screaming because they're so confused about Mike, what's happening. Michael Richards kind of goes away. And he disappears. He gets sprayed in the face with a fire extinguisher and he just kind of <laughs> drops goes, dead. Talks, disappears tucks in the into corner. the yeah. ether. So we never yeah. see him again. Yes. And so after that, that's when the argument ensues. Yes. And then and then she throws a fucking chair through the went through the double glass yes. window, which, which are like how. very very strong. Yeah, glass. That wouldn't happen. But chair goes through, the destroys the fucking soundboard. So now, even though they fix the tape, they can't, they can't play. play it, the, yeah. They can't broadcast. Yeah. So they're like, so Chaz is like, well, what the fuck are we gonna do? And I think it's Milo, or is it the record it's label? It's Rex. Rex is Rex like, has this idea. I got an idea. It cuts to a helicopter <laughs> carrying a stage, <laughs> flying a stage. Flying in. over, like, steel truss beams <laughs> over and building like, the stage. You no, know, it's like a fully constructed stage. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. where did they get this? I don't know. Like, what were their demands? <laughs> <laughs> like, we need a full so, steel stage construction yeah. flown in ASAP. So, before we get to the outside part, I have a part... Where it's just Brendan Fraser. Yes. And they're all kind of upset. And Chaz just sits on this broken glass booth window. Yes. And has a burrito with a fucking sad melancholic song. In the background. <laughs> <laughs> and then he squirts the burrito with the oh, fucking he's water. Through gun. With the water with the hot like, sauce and the water. What is gun? going on? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that's a very good bit. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that yeah, up. Yeah, I, I was fucking dying at Fraser that part. really sells the deadpan in here. Yeah. He sells a lot like that this guy is so thoroughly committed. We can't also forget about the chant of Rodney King. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was... Oh, no. That was I when I was like, get oh, by. Rodney, Rodney. That was when I was like, oh, my Lord. Um, so, yeah, they, they like... Fraser like goes out and, and this is when he meets the girlfriend but he's on top yes. of this cop car and he doesn't want the cops to come in so he starts chanting Rodney King to oh get the crowd God. incited <laughs> um uh, so now everyone and their mother's yeah, showing so up so now to like this now everyone studio. shows up because they think it's like a race um protest in addition to a rock pro and like you know it fits into like the element they're trying to get out in this movie of like like stupid white guys co-opting like the like idea of being oppressed when they're not right um so like that element like kind of works it just was a little strange to hear brendan fraser yelling that yeah um yeah. and um, so are we at the performance bit yeah, i think so we're basically now, at the okay, performance Stuart, now we can talk about the performance Stuart so, wants to talk so, about this performance. so this fucking not really massive <laughs> gigantic stage gets dropped right in front of the music studio the tacomi plaza tower uh-huh and Nakotami. And they that. come out here, they get on their Brendan Fraser like starts to like strum a guitar and it doesn't make any sounds. Right. And so he's like, We don't have any juice. Like, what's going on? And then the producer no guy juice. He's like, he's like no, oh, yeah, no juice. You're gonna pantomime no. to it. Something that yeah, I tell in the background. A, he says every it's a day. music video, not a performance. Right. Because we're gonna tape it. Yeah. There's like one quick shot where it like dollies into Buscemi's face and it's like we do this for real. <laughs> it was just one <laughs> random shot that just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. I'm like that. They really wanted to get that one line in a very specific shot. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? And so the music is playing. 
Yes. They're not, but they're play. not playing. They're just standing there. Yeah. Right. And then the fucking crowd's they're still going berserk. for authenticity. Right. Chris Farley like, turns around and sees the crowd running. He's like, oh my God. And then <laughs> he falls over and we never see him again. Right. The Super Bowl is squashed into yeah, a room. fucking Pip is kicking over drums and yeah. shit. And it's going. There's one scene where the producer wild. like is on the stage with him. It's like, you guys got to start playing. Start playing. Start playing. And there's a guy that's like, you're ruining my shot. And then like crane dolly comes yeah. up. <laughs> and I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> yeah. uh, so they jump into the crowd to crowd surf. Yeah, um, and they they finally achieve. Yeah, because the crowd breaks through the cops, obviously. Yeah. Right. And the like, black guy's like, "Well, let him go. It's all right." Because like we kind of been jumping around that there are a lot of bits going on here, but at the so end of the day, bits. like it all kind of coalesces back into just the idea of these three guys who just want to be heard, and their music finally gets heard. Yeah. They get what they want. They get to be real rockers. And then, like, while the music's still playing, it transitions to them playing a concert. Yeah, in prison. In prison. In prison, which is and the, great. And says yeah. that, and like the text, you know, text that appears at the end of every biopic pops up. The Lone Rangers like, were sentenced to. Well, there was one bit. It was uh, um, uh, live from prison. No, yeah. uh, David Rossi, uh, Matang- Matanga. Uh, David- Joey Matang, um, something Matang. John Matang, Matang. Yes. Uh, he's like on the phone. It's like, they're going to start going on tour in six months. Well, three months if they act properly. And if they then behave. If they behave. And then, yeah, it is the biopic thing. And it's like the Lone Rangers were sentenced to six months in prison. And they then their record reached triple platinum or whatever. And then credits. Yes. But during this performance in prison... Rex is dry humping his guitar <laughs> right in front of these two black guys. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and Pip's like, or is it Pip or Rex? He's like, uh, hey, Chaz. I, I don't know. No. I think it's Pip. We missed the scene where Chaz openly confesses to the crowd that he's actually, he was a nerd in high school. Yes. And oh, yes. Chester. That was great. And then the crowd responds with like, I was like, I play, I play D&D, D&D too. <laughs> I wore corduroy pants. I was the editor of my Boo. high school's magazine. <laughs> right. I pick my nose and eat the boogers. Right. We, we basically talked about the movie. What is everyone's favorite bit? I think this is maybe the best way to discuss what our favorite bit was in this movie. Because uh, it's a bit heavy movie. Uh, I know. I'd say either the Rodney King bit, <laughs> where he gets everyone to chant. Yeah, it gets everyone incited. Or. Oh my God! When he's in the locker room, trapped to a chair. Oh yes. And then he sucks on the fucking doorknob to get it open. <laughs> oh my yeah, God! At one point, they yeah, they, they, that's they my tie Michael bit. McKean up to a chair. He's Michael McKean, very good in this movie. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. one point, he's there like they they throw him into a closet, and when he's being wheeled, in, he says, "My aunt was buried alive." <laughs> like they <laughs> shut the door on him. He's in there just <laughs> sucking on the door handle, trying to get it to open. I think I, I, that's probably my favorite bit yeah. too, <laughs> just because it goes for a long time. Yeah, he doesn't. It's not that like he gets it on the first bit and then he gets out in two seconds. No, it's like there is a fifteen second shot, just like a medium yeah. wide of him sucking. Perfuse, yeah. profusely on and the, the door sound room. effects. Yeah. You... Yeah. So imagine that for 15 seconds until you hear a clink. There's no the good door. bit in this movie. They're all just kind of small humorous bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot going. This movie does not have a focus. If I were to pick one good bit, it was when everything ensues in yeah. that booth. Because we we, can't, we didn't we didn't even mention that David Arquette has a whole like arc of like learning to love the band and being yeah, famous, yeah. Reggie, Kathy, like there's so much happening. Yeah, or so when the, much. they enter the black guy and he's playing the guitar, yeah. and then he sees the Uzis and he just yeah. goes, "Damn!" <laughs> <laughs> Cuts. <laughs> yeah, I mean Chris Farley at the nightclub is kind of Chris Farley. Not, Chris Farley very good in this movie. Yeah, but he's not given anything to yeah. really do. It's like, what are you gonna do about it? Improvise. Like this, this movie gets on off on the fact that it has a great cast. Yeah, and like they're making mountains out of molehills, pretty much. And not that it's like, eh. So, but yeah, that's in essence uh, airheads. airheads. Yeah, that that is in essence airheads. An hour and thirty minutes. Go watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like watch it somehow it's it was easier to watch than criminal activities <laughs> criminal I I, yeah i enjoyed this movie i did too i enjoyed this movie a lot for a 29 percent rotten tomato yeah this is a um i called this I, my review for this movie was just dudes rock 
Because that's what this movie is. It's just dudes, dudes rock in the movie. Rock. 29% Rotten Tomatoes. Jeff, what did this do like box office wise? Oh, uh, so this is a, a disaster. Yeah. This movie um, uh, costs $11.2 million to make. It comes out, makes $5.8 million total. It's opening weekend, it only made one point nine. Um, opened tenth place. Complete, tenth place. Complete disaster at the box office. Terrible reviews. The uh, the Rotten Tomatoes synopsis is: There's a biting satire that keeps threatening to burst out of the well cast airheads, but unfortunately, the end result lives down to its title in the most unfortunate ways. And I don't entirely agree with that, um, even if I don't entirely disagree. Like I think that there's this is a moderately effective satire just on like the culture that these guys are in. I don't I think agree. it's particularly intelligent. Yeah. But you know it's it gets by on being a well cast dumb comedy with some bite to it. If that makes sense. It does make sense. Stuart, yeah. what are you what are you looking at? Uh, nothing important. Nothing important. Copy that. Yeah. Stuart's never looking at anything important. No. <laughs> Never a thing. Uh, I probably could have spent an hour and a half watching a better movie. <laughs> watching a better movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not a big fan. Not a big fan of Airheads. Just Air the Heads. bits. Just the bits. Not enough. Too. Not not enough good bits. Stewart's no. going through it. Okay. <laughs> Adam, when you've covered this is episode ten, yeah. we did seventy three episodes of Travolting. When you cover eighty three. <laughs> movies yeah you guys should take a, a wide turn here <laughs> a wide turn a wide, a wide tur turn just go top movies of each no every single one no complete roster we we, were, we recorded an episode on son-in-law where he's in it for three seconds you're gonna run dry i feel like we've already run dry <laughs> no. Stewart's gonna run off the tracks dude <laughs> Oh it's man, brutal! Just we, no, listen, so, listen to our life on the line episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine if you could do if you could do like if you could do one through three Paul Newman movie movies. <laughs> I mean, the, the new cast. Tell Bailey a lover, <laughs> <laughs> Lucille. Well, we, we would we would of course do Cars. Um, a what? The, the finest Paul Newman performance, Cars. Yes, I 100 percent agree. Yeah, you know, lightning. You got to turn left, right to go left. We know lightning. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> or Patrick Swayze movies. Ooh, Point Break. That'd be Our fun. Fuck. Point Break. Another movie that's very difficult to watch. See, here's the thing, Adam. We have to find an actor whose name can be pleasantly turned into a podcast title. So like Swayze. You could do that's it. Swayze. Just called the Swayze. Swayze. The Get Swayze. 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 Get Swayze. Swayze baby. Swayze baby. I don't know. Fraser's Edge is just It's very like, clean. It's, it's very, very clean. clean. Travolting. Very, very clean. clean. The, Hanks for the memories. Wazy, Cruise Swayze. control. Cruise control. Stallone zone. Stallone zone. Pesci. The Pesh pack. <laughs> Pesh, the Pesh. It would be called the Pesh pack. Um, okay. You, me, and Sir Ian McKellen. You, me, you, me and Sir Ian. <laughs> Judy Dench, you know it. <laughs> Do Judy Dench know right. it? Newman Zone. Newman oh. Zone. Zone. I mean, that is, yeah, that is his, uh, his uh, salad dressing label. Yeah. Okay. We're like, we're getting off the beaten path yeah. at this point. Airheads yeah. is nothing much to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Do we have any final thoughts on Airheads? Have a bottle of Jack Daniels with you when you always. watch this movie. No, no, no. no. Oh, when you watch this movie, just have a bottle of Jack Daniels mm. with you always at work in okay. your office drawer. In regards to Fraser's Fraser's career at this point, this movie does just kind of it hurts him, but it doesn't hurt him because he's still early enough and young enough that like he can afford a few hits or afford a few losses. Yeah, he can take some hits rather than get the hits. Yeah, he, he's taking some hits. Like, and the fact that this does help him later down the line because like this might not have done anything for him opening weekend. Um, but when it starts playing on Comedy Central, it becomes a cult classic. This movie does, in some respect, make its budget back just on like DVD sales and Comedy Central plays. Yeah. Um, and it gets kind of Fraser a lot of credit as like, you know, I grew up watching that movie that no one else liked. This movie accidentally becomes an artifact of the very people it's trying to parody. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when people look back nowadays, because we're kind of in a Fraser renaissance right now, uh -huh. which is in part why we're doing the show... 
they kind of they talk about Airheads as one of those like big early ones. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. It's great. It's right, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I have Can't nothing else to say. Nothing else Can't to say. Can't wait till we watch The Whale. The Whale, that's going to be a lot of fun. So you and I are going to cry. Can't wait until I watch something else. <laughs> In like 15 minutes. Yeah. Just well, refresh I, my memory of yeah. everything I just seen. Uh, it was football day, right? It's football. Well, I'll get you to that. Good. So, good, good. thank you, folks, for listening. <laughs> Happy 9-11, everybody. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what a way to end our episode on. Uh, thank you all, all right. for listening yeah. to this episode on Airheads. Make sure to tune in next week for episode 11, In the Army Now, our next bout with Pauly Shore. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you for coming, Adam. Um, make sure to check out our episode on criminal activities if you want to hear more, Adam. Yes. Um, and as always, please remember to rate, re subscribe whatever platform you're listening on. As a reminder, we are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Pop to our Reddit, r slash Travolting. You can find us at Travolting Pod on Twitter or Instagram. You can email us, Travolting Podcast at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at Jeff W. Sweeney. Narg. Adam, anything you want to plug? Narg. All right. And Lord special thanks. Rangers. Special Narg. thanks, as always, to Rebecca Johnson for our graphic design and Michael Van Bodegum Smith for the theme music that is now taking you out. See you folks next week for In the Army Now. Bye.